quick upset. Not gonna lie, it's always fun pulling for the underdogs, and DKK has definitely gave us reason to believe that the underdog has a chance. Well, for sure. I mean, you look at their record, 7-1 and one versus 3-5. and five. You know, it doesn't look like... Watching these games, it hasn't looked like a 7-1 and one team versus a 3-5 and five team. Not at all. I think if you were to watch them without knowing knowing their records, you would say Cron 6 may be a little bit stronger, but not, you know, punishingly so. DKK holding onto their ban, using up a little bit of the time pool. They're trying to be as calculated as possible with this. this I'm not sure they approach it. They want to go with it, though. I was going to say, that tells me they're considering not banning the Kel'Thuzad, and this time they ban the Garage. Yep. The Garage did like have that. a huge impact in that game. I find in casting these best of threes, you see the most adjustments in the game three as these teams get to know each other better. Teams are almost like a the... little series meta. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Exactly. On a it's side just, note, you know... I really miss the extra time when it was a third party website doing drafts. I miss the extra time, but as a caster, I love the ease of in client like this and how much it cuts oh, yeah. down on the downtime between games. Oh yeah, That's definitely, oh, yeah. definitely. On to the first pick for DKK. First and pick, Arcanis. Interesting. They're, they're feeling ballsy. Let's see if we can see some H82 swabs. I expect to see probably a Vala Greymane, one of those two out of here for the race. Typically, that's what you see early on Battlefield of Eternity. Maybe a Rhaegar Greymane here. Nope. Keldus Jumping on, on the oh. on. Here we go, yeah. boys. So how do you DKK counter a Kael'thuzad? What, what do you respond with if you're DKK? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> I have literally only played him in quick match. I just got him to level like almost 6 today. But he obviously... Huh? Can you hear me? Yeah, you're yeah, good. Yes, yeah, you're online. You're online. No, um... He's very susceptible to quick damage, obviously. He has zero mobility, and playing quick match, you're going to have all sorts of Novas running around, so he definitely dies quickly to something of that nature. So maybe a little more divey, um, and DKK responds with the Greymane Rhaegar, like you mentioned, Jake. I do like that follow-up from the Greymane Rhaegar. Uh, through three picks on the side of DKK, they have... Answered their soul lane already. They have kill potential and they have insane objective pressure. So I like the way their draft has already begun. Do we see the mouth ban here? Do they let that through again? And is that something that uh, DKK is even considering with how their draft is going? After taking the Uther, I don't think they're going to worry about banning the Mouth Yield with the Artanis being on the other side. And I even think they might look to take it away. KT being hovered. They're really, really considering this one, letting it burn all the way down to the end there. I can see them considering more um, a couple frontline heavy picks here. So maybe the KT ban are just kind of... Uh, and it is Kael'thas. Yeah, just uh, preemptively banning it. So maybe it doesn't look that good right now, but with them picking it... Oh... Something to enable the the Kel'Thuzad, you know, <laughs> combos. So, do you ban out like an Arthas here, who has a pro gives Greymane trouble and also gives out a lot of slows for Kel'Thuzad combos? That's what they're thinking. They are definitely thinking it, and I think that was a very good ban on the side of DKK. Arthas just he's very hard to deal with when you want to play with Greymane, when you want to have the Artanis getting in there. Uh, Artanis has, or I'm sorry, Arthas has very good follow up if. Um, the immortal stuns accidentally, just little things that kind of are out of your control that could end up being a bad scenario. I would like to see uh, Kron 6 take that mouth heal here now, though. I want to see them take something that's going to help protect Kael'thuzad from that swap because he's not particularly mobile. He's primo target number one for that Arcana swap. 
That's kind of what I'd like to see right here. Some kind of frontliner that's going to uh, do that for Kalthazad. ETC and Mouthiel are the first two picks that j just jump straight to my mind. One for the peel, two for the strong soul, and, and the percentage health to get through the Artana shielding. I was thinking about an ETC paired with uh, Kel'Thuzad. Just and they to go enable. the complete other direction, and instead of beefy frontline, they go all damage all the time. Triple backline with the double support. So Uther gets to, like he gets to play the role of healer slash off tank. He does. <laughs> yeah. But I, I do think this also plays into Kron 6's hand. It doesn't look like they're going to have a soul lane. You're probably going to see Tassadar and Vala laning against the Artanis, which is going to force a rotation. So who do we take on the side of... I, I really like in... Hmm. You need another warrior, right? For sure, so, 100%. Definitely need another frontliner. Tyrael. Tyrael. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, if you Tyrael want... plays in well to what they have going. Is this going to be a judgment Tyrael onto Kael'thuzad? Oh. It very well could be, but I think we're going to see the Protect the Greyman, and you might even see a Wizen Duelist. Oh and a Zagaro. So Artanis not going to be in the solo, going to be down part of the bottom four-man. I mean, I might be even a little confident saying that you might see more of a work and form build the gray main coming in here. <coughs> I will say, going into those last two picks for DKK, it would have taken me a lot of guesses before I got to Tyrael Zagara. Zagara is something that we know a lot about. Zagara is... She's a bully. She's been a bully for a long time. Even when she falls out of the meta, she slowly creeps her way back in, and she takes right a hold of that lane. Is this going to be a maw on Zagara, though, because we're on Battlefield? It very uh, well yeah. could be. I, I, I actually so. believe it will be. I think that they there still could be a little bit of value with the Nidus, but I do think that we're going to see a maw. So speaking of Zagara, our Zagara players in chat and did not call Zagara. He actually called a different <laughs> character. So uh, we're a little bit ahead, so he'll find that out here soon. The only reason <laughs> I do think Nidus could come into play is if Kron 6 does manage to take the lead in the mid game and early game that they've been showing, Nidus will definitely help to continue soaking the side lanes if DKK fall, finds themselves in a position where they need to catch up in XP. But again, I do think we're going to see. <laughs> Well, these drafts are certainly very different than the first couple games we had. Yeah, the Johanna going over to Kron 6. Um, very curious to see how this Kel'Thuzad plays out, but I would be lying if I didn't say that I thought that DKK won draft. Well, I mean, that's going to be contingent on the swaps. He's got to hit swaps on Avala or Kel'Thuzad. Jake, why don't you a lot call of pressure the... on themselves. So... Yeah, for sure. Why don't you call the blue team here, Jake? On the blue side, we have Kron 6, Game 3. Ding playing that Johanna. Flatius Rex on Vala. Lazy French on the Kel'Thuzad. Mark rounding out Uther and Kaza on Tassadar. Corey, go for DKK. DKK, Tyrael is going to be piloting Ralph's... Oh, switch that. Ralph's 2 is going to be piloting the Tyrael. Gokiburi on Grey Mane. Hotaro on Rhaegar, Shwek on Artanis, and Apple Eater on Zagara. Uh, Little uh, note, I would like to, to mention, Apple Eater has been the main tank for DKK. I yes, was, he has. I was just going to note the same thing. I was going to the exact same thing. You have Ralph Stu going from Vala and Kael'thas onto Tyrael, and Shweek mm. from Vala onto uh, Artanis here. So we have our resident... Uh... I'm not going to call him a one-trick, but our resident <laughs> uh, Zagara player. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying Ma. Yeah, he said he does say you have to go Ma. Well, he thinks. Okay. Tassadar responds to the solo lane, leaving Vala down in the four-man. So it is going to be a Tassadar versus Zagara. <clears throat> well, Zagara should win that in the top. Now, what are, usually you, for a maw, 
for kind of a wombo. What kind of a wombo are you going to put together with the comp DKK has with a short range swap on the Bala there? You could you look, look to have a Rhaegar slow out of or coming out of Maw, maybe a Tyrael sink and just letting Greymane do Greymane things. And out of the Artanis, you think we're probably going to see the uh, Suppression Pulse, I would imagine, with the Vala? Or are you going to go Purifier Vala, Beam? Yeah. You could also stick the Purifier Beam on Kael'thuzad, though, and make him run around in the back line. Yeah, I do think that is feasible. I do think it's going to be the Suppression, though. Uh, only for the sole fact that Tassadar is obviously going to auto-attack build as well. What if you get Swaps Q? are being hit. Yeah, but all, always short range ones. We haven't seen any of those really long, isolating swaps. Keep an eye on Kel'Thuzad's quest. He's already at 8. I feel like that is pretty good within 2 minutes. Yeah, that's pretty good. <coughs> Greymane's going to start putting, doing damage on the top of Mortal. What if you try to get cute by DKK and you do a judgment into a purifier beam onto Kel'Thuzad? Kel'Thuzad yeah. does look to get that combo. Tyrael's getting low. Less than 100 hit points. Uh, Ralph Stu does escape, though. Nice use of uh, his Q on Tyrael there. There's a Cron swap. 6 lands the swap. On Vala There's into tower swap. range. Nice combo from Kel'Thuzad to finish off wow. that Artanis after the swap, though. Yeah, that was a really good combo. You know, speaking and DKK is just gonna have to back out. Speaking of roll swaps, Lazy French, I believe, was on Garage last game and now on Kelthazon. We have players that are comfortable with certain niche heroes yeah. for sure. I mean, we have fairly set roles on our team, but I usually main tank. However, those games when we play Chromie, I'm swift flopping back there. So um, we so, know all about it. Yeah, <laughs> we don't do it too much, but every now and again. DKK coming back, looking to see if they can push Kron 6 back, getting some more damage onto the Immortal. Halftime show comes. Considering uh, how that went, I'm surprised that uh, DKK didn't actually lose that harder, because they have a much better race right now with a Rhaegar and a Greymane. Absolutely. Even Zagara comes down to help push yeah. this thing down. Good move. They're going to win this anyway. Or are they? Johanna zoning three heroes back. back. But no damage Tyrael. went on to DKK's, or uh, I should say, yeah, no damage went on to DKK's Immortal that whole time. Zagara now yep. side soaking. I really like this decision making right now. Good, good patience. That's been really the hallmark of both of these games out of DKK is patience. DKK backed out just to heal up. They're going to continue to push in on the Immortal. I think they're going to get it right here. They do. It's a good effort on Vala's side just to try and poke it down, just to get that shield a little lower. Swap, Swap lands on a Johanna. She's got She's no gonna mana. Fall, I believe. No mana. The speed up. There it is. Look for Zagar to get back in that top lane just to continue that side soak. And it's going to force a lot out of the Tassadar, I'm assuming, that's going to be right back up there. But with a shielded Immortal in the back, Zagar going to the top lane, this could be some decent siege coming out. <laughs> You know, this goes back to what I said uh, between games here. Is this the first time in any of these games that DKK has secured the first objective of the game? Because I think it is. Uh, I do believe DKK actually got the the first, um, well, as Kel'Thuzad falls, but they got the first spider push out of um, Spider Queen, because I remember Leoric was clearing out the spiders. Yeah. But two heroes right. do... That's a two-for-two oh. two trade. Greymane falls... Bavala coming in to punish. Yeah, Schweik did get I the like swap on the Kel'Thuzad to take him out, but they ended up turning that into a three for two. Still, though, DKK yeah. on top after the first objective, and Zag getting great pressure in the top lane. That was a good two-man effort uh, between Tyrael and the Artanis. Tyrael is just kind of bullying Kel'Thuzad into an awkward place in between the, the bottom um, fort and, well... And then that just allowed Artanis to get a, a nice swap, which secured the kill. I really want to see Judgment, just because I want to see Judgment. <laughs> judgment is a fun little tool. Yeah, man, back when uh, I was a Silver Plebe and early Heroes, when Lili was like the hotness and Silver and stuff, and nobody ever interrupted Cups, I would take Tyrael when the other team took Lili just to Judgment Cups. Because nobody <laughs> ever interrupted it. <laughs> 
Kelty saw chains misses. Jake, I know you mentioned maybe going to more of a Worgen form, Worgen build for uh, Grey Main, but looks like it's gonna be Cocktails. Well, the Cocktails Dream will get a lot of value on Vala and Kalthazad. Uh, once that Excellent. Cocktail yeah. quest is finished, man, Vala and uh, KT will get absolutely chunked. I think if Grey Main would have went down that path, you would have seen DKK just a hundred percent all ending on the team fight. They already have a really good team fighting comp, which is why I believe that you might as well just go the standard put, uh, oh, build to a lot of Oh, on Zag. They almost pick yeah. her, but she rotated just just to back just in time. Zag is paying dividends in the top lane, putting a lot of pressure. Yes, he is. This time, good however, on, yeah. Vala got Ron on there six fast. Jumps onto the Immortal quick, and it is already almost down to half health. Although, look but at DKK has responded. Yeah, they almost took that back with the Rhaegar and the Greymane. The Rhaegar and the Greymane are so fast early game on the race. Vala will, of course, ramp up later game. But uh, early game, Greymane and Vala have the advantage. And push unopposed in the top lane on DKK. I would like to see more patience out of them right now. Backing up and letting Huge that push take effect. Greymane almost died getting Kel'Thuzad comboed. Tyrael is going to be rooted. Ooh, the stun's coming from the Immortal. Tyrael dies. Yeah, uh, Lazy French has been money on those chains. Yes, he has. I don't know if these. Oh, Kelter's oh, another swap. big swap. I think Artanis may get him if he gets a Q. Q should be coming right That's now. The armor. That's the armor. Uh, uh, he armor. took the armor talent at four. I need to back off of this now. Everyone's back up. And they have DKK fountain is the bottom, they have spend. fountain, they can tap if they need to DKK to hand. They're sending Greyman and Artanis to finish this. Valak comes in for the defend. Now I want to see DKK back up though, once they showed up to defend. And that's exactly why right there. That was actually a nice cleanse, the Tyrael didn't take full advantage of it too. Swap on the Tassadar, not, on, not the ideal target for that. Um, puts Artanis in a bad place, but he's... He was very low Stands going out. into that, yeah. That that was a bit awkward for him. Greymane poking a little bit more on the Immortal, but Kron6 finds herself fully committed to their DK, and it looks like they're going to get it. However, DKK on the verge of 10, I don't know how much advantage they're going to be able to take from this. Serial goes in on Kelton. Oh, very good disengage with the Glacial Spike in his chains. And they do hit 10s immediately as the objective pops. Go for the throat on Greymane, which makes sense with all those squishy backliners back there. It is Sanctification from Tyrael. Ancestral Healing from Rhaegar. Uh, I believe that's Suppression Pulse from Artanis. And I can't Nidus. tell. Nidus. It is Nidus. Interesting. Johanna is being bullied down by four heroes, but she's going to walk out just as Johanna always does. <laughs> That's what she does. Her greatest strength in the game is simply walking out of everything. Kel'Thuzad did uh, use that Shadow Fisher. It did push a few heroes away, but the Immortals just ultimately going to still die without taking down the fort. KDD showing their all of these games how good they are at defending against objectives. They've really shown great ability to do that fairly safely in all of these games. A force well taken by Tassadar, Divine Shield by Uther. Kel'Thuzad's going to pick up the Shadow Fissure, along with Reign of Vengeance for Vala and Blessed Shield with Joanna. <coughs> now, I yeah, will say, no Q build out of Vala on Battlefield. Hmm. That's a little surprising. Usually on Battlefield, it's pretty much always Q build. Her build is actually a little odd with the Caltrops at level 1. I mean, you get so much value out of that Q build, and, and that's where she gets all of her, not all, but a lot of her Immortal Burn. Cocktail well, Quest completed. That's going to be a big deal. Uh, Q Quest finished for uh, Greymane there. Zagar is just looking to bully Tassadar in the bottom lane. A little Pressure bit of pulse comes down top. top. Johanna lands a three-man uh, Blessed Shield. That is a lot of ultimates being popped in this fight top. Was Ancestral did land on the Kel'Thuzad. Look at the cocktail, man. The cocktail is doing work. 
Yeah. Well, all in the bottom lane, Zagara has bullied Tassar all the way down to the fort, and the fort is more than likely going to fall here in a second. You know, DKK, that's something they can do, is just take these drawn-out four-mans, and as long as they don't lose them, it allows Zagara to bully the other lane out. Absolutely. Something we're very familiar with. <laughs> uh, then, uh, the... The shaman camp was taken right as the objective was popped on both sides. Yeah. A little earlier on the side of DKK, but Vala's already making the rotation up to clear that out. And here oh. they come. This is the closest mid game we've had in any of these games so far. So DKK standing strong, and they're jumping all over the immortal. All over the immortal while they see two heroes in the top lane, yeah. and Zagar is just taking a camp bottom. Good shot calling, and now they're going to disengage as Kron 6 shows up in force. Yeah, Blood Shield was used there, but there was no follow-up, um, no no follow-up engage. So it was used, and DKK just walked away. Zagara still showing bottom. She does have this Nidus network here right nearby. She can show up anytime she needs to, which might be right now. Still, she, there she like is. She is coming. There she is. Nope, stay DKK bottom. Being, DKK being pushed back a little <laughs> bit. They are 13, but Kron has the advantage seeing Zagara in the bottom lane. And now this is a 5 on 4 DKK is taking here. Central nice land bond material, sanctification. There's the Zag. Greymane's super low. But he goes in with the go for the throat, gets the kill. The side of DKK is getting all very low. Zagara falls, and they're going to have to back off. Shadowfisher's going to hit two heroes. Tyrael's going to fall as well. Great Shadowfisher. Lazy French has really been the MVP this early game, I think, for a Kron 6 here. Because he just turned well, his team fight loss into a team fight win by picking off those low heroes. Four for none. One thing to do, note, though, that DKK did get the fort with that Cosmo camp in the bottom lane. Yes, they and did. Uther did die early on, but he, he's already respawned, so... Johanna taking the free fort in the top for Kron 6. And I don't think they're going to actually get here in time to contest, so Kron 6 will secure about a half strength of mortal, and also they're slightly uh, about a half a level lead, probably their biggest of the game thus far. Nice Artanis swap comes in with the swap on the Uther. DKK was very chunked out from that again. That Shadowfisher is putting in a lot of work. Yeah, Zagara went in, balls to the wall, and paid with all, several <laughs> life bars. I don't think this Immortal's going to get much out of it. They're already on it, mid lane. Kron 6 isn't here to push with it. It does get the wall, but it's going to fall very quickly. So a wall and a well is all they lost bottom lane. <laughs> I will but say now that. They... Look at that creep, man. That's creep everywhere. Great creep spread for Zagara. Yep. Speaking of Zagara, she's going to start, continue to spread the creep and work her way top. I mean, is the response to Zagara from Kron 6 at this point to stop having Zag contest her and start taking 5 on 4s? As it the, very well might be. As the death timers get longer, that gets more and more viable. It does. Kron 6 is coming up here close on to 16. But DKK isn't very far off as either. Nice cleanse onto the Artanis. Swap, Swap onto Uther. Onto Uther. Yes, D shield self cast. Shadow Fisher coming up, lands onto two heroes. Ancestral lands onto the Tyrael to keep him up. This uh, game three hasn't disappointed. We are 15 minutes in, only a half level difference. Structure's very close in our closest game of the set so far. Yeah, Zagara just doing Zagara things up top. Um, she secures the Khazar camp and looks like she's gonna let that take the top fort. So we're more or less even on structures. Yeah, both teams down Almost to exactly. only their keeps. Yeah. However, we'll massive push second. top here for DKK. Yes. Yeah. 
The shaman camp was just started for uh, the side of Kron 6, so it will be Huge swap on a Joanna. It takes a lot Four. to bring Johanna down. Yeah. Tasted our shield. Great nice sank. sank. Oh, completely negating all of that Kael'thas damage, or Kael'thasad damage. Less shield lands onto four, and Rhaegar's gonna suffer for it. Artanis puts himself in a bad spot from swap. And two go down for DKK. I was gonna mention this before, but uh, I think one of the most powerful non-10, non-20 talents just probably taken. I'm gonna guess a, yeah, but Holy Ground for Tyrael completely changes the dynamics of the game. I would really want to see how they use that on the side of DKK. Absolutely. And even with DKK losing two members, they still managed to take a quarter of health away before halftime hunt. And they have to respond to the push top, so DKK will have a chance to get some of this back here. Yeah, that was an unfortunate fight because they came so close to dropping the Johanna, but like you guys said, it takes a lot to kill Johanna. And I would have liked to see them just maybe poke her down a little bit and realize they weren't going to secure that kill. And Combo lands on the Greymane. They've almost even this immortal race up. Kron sticks still a little ahead, but the gap has been closed. And Greymane though had to had to get some health, so they're going into defensive mode here. We're going to need Kron him back. Gonna get this. Yeah, Sanctification still on cooldown, although Johanna does eat some stuns. Nice force wall to isolate out, and that's going to be immortal. For the third straight time, going to Kron 6. Rain of Vengeance falls onto Artanis. Greyman goes in. The Ancestral just misses. Oh. And Artanis falls as well. Late game now, we see Kron 6 starting to take control. Nice. Good holy ground. Great holy ground. Yeah. You know, like I said, uh, I get. The obvious answer to a Kel'Thuzad is uh, like a dive comp, you know, to dive on him, kill him. But with how much crowd control he has, and who's <clears throat> lazy French? He's he's landing his combo. So when a Kel'Thuzad lands his combos, what do you, what can you do? You know, you dive on him, he displaces you, the other team follows up. So he's doing a very good job. Uh, showing Absolutely. why uh, they were banning him those first two games. Yeah. Again, there there goes a combo on this aerial, and which and ultimately Tyrion. blows him up. It's just dead. Yeah, he just got basically 100 to nothing there. Got absolutely exploded. Yeah. And with uh, that pick, this could be pretty bad. With no sank here, they immortal still around 75% hit points. It's very well they could look to try and maybe get another pick for it to end. We'll see. And this is one of the disadvantages to the Zagara, who is an early game hero. If you can't parlay that bullying, great swap on the Lazy French. They might get Kelthas out here. If you can't parlay comes out. that early game Zagara bullying into a lead, uh, she really falls off late game. Yeah, and with Rhaegar and Greymane falling. Oh, sorry. With Rhaegar and Artanis falling, that's going to be game for sure. That is going to be game. Kron 6 Great pulling series. out. Yeah, that was a really entertaining series. Uh, Kron 6 surviving the upset scare and taking the victory. I'm going to see if we can get uh, one of those guys to come in for a little chat. It's always fun when you can do that. Let's see who is... Okay, well, let's try it on him. All right, so Kron 6 advancing to the round of 8. Taking out a upset-sided Dunning-Kruger Knights. And, Very uh, well played by both teams. Oh, yeah, for sure. That, that game 1 comeback for DKK was... Uh, was pretty impressive. And uh, their resiliency and patience was on display all three games. So, uh, in hindsight, should we have stuck to that Kael'thuzad ban? Or, uh, or is, is the Grosh still the right ban there? 
You know what? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's kind of pick your poison. Garage, those the flips from Garage were absolutely insane. Um, I think if who did they have with Garage? They had they had Stuke off, so they didn't even need the Uther. Yeah. I don't know. Kelty's odd proved to be a huge nuisance, though. And he actually wasn't even team high damage. Uh, Vala was actually that game. Keltuzad was definitely not lacking the damage, though, pumping out 61k of his own. For sure. So it looks like we will have Kaza, Tassadar player, who is uh, going to join us here. So I'm going to try to get him in our chat. Ready. And ultimately, I think Keltuzad can be punished more if, if their player wasn't hitting the combos and... Uh, exposing himself a little more, you know, uh, with with poor positioning and what have you, then I think he he dies a lot more than a poorly positioned Garrosh. So, absolutely, yeah, I think the Garrosh ban is good. I mean, after seeing the play, though, I don't think you could have really gone wrong with either. No, I, <laughs> I'm having a hard time trying to find out which one they. Really wouldn't have wanted to see, and I can't come to a conclusion of favoring one or the other. It's It was devastating on both ends. And maybe that's just attributed to Lazy French's Kel'Thuz odd play, but the guy was not missing his combos. No, for sure. And, and I would be curious if... Uh... I'm going to see if I can even get that from those guys. If the Kel'Thuzad bans, the first two games were targeted, or they were just general bans because they didn't want to see him. You know what I asked? So I haven't got a response yet. Oh, did you? Oh. Okay. Look at look at Corey there being... So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, they just we were purely banning him just because he's a strong hero. They felt like he was just a strong hero. Okay. Not necessarily scouting him out. So, ter so turns out that uh, they were right though, because French really played the money, and they and I think they first picked him like almost insta locked him when he was available too. Oh yeah, there was no hesitation on their end. So great showing though at a KDD. Um, didn't didn't leave anything on the table. Uh, really impressive play out of them, and I think I think it's something actually our team is pretty weak at to be honest, is playing from behind, but. As weird as it says, those guys actually put a clinic on how to play effectively from behind in those first two games. Absolutely. And it's so hard to do as well. I think we have a <laughs> guest. We do. Koza, can you hear us? Oh, he's not coming in. Hold on. I've seen him lit up, or light up. Yeah, but he's not I'm coming not through anything. the I'm not hearing him either. Well, check on your end, Koza, because I th think. Testing? There you go. We can hear you now. Can you guys it's hear working him? working now. Yeah, nice. I can hear him. Perfect. Well, first of all, uh, congratulations. Thank guys, you. Guys, moving on. Um, real quick, top seed, Tuesday Division 2. How did your season go so far this year? Pardon me? I said I've top seed, you guys top seed, Division 2. Yep. Tuesday night. Talk a little bit about how your season went relative to your expectations, and uh, what do you guys, how do you feel moving forward? Uh, a couple of teams really gave us a run for our money, but uh, for the most part, um, I think we just had really strong drafts, and we would kind of research some of the other teams beforehand, and that really helped us ban out some of the heroes, like uh, banning Stitches in that last game. We knew they knew how to play around it, so... We knew we had to start changing our drafts at that point. Um, you know, looking at the records, as a, you know, when I cast, I try to look at the teams a little bit. And uh, anytime you have a number one team playing basically a number 17 seed, you know, you in the back of your head, you think, well, this might be a little one-sided. Those games <laughs> most certainly were not. Uh, especially, not. especially after how that game one ended. What was, uh, what was the chatter like amongst the teams after that uh, game one comeback they were able to pull off? 
Uh, well, after game one, we kind of figured out that they were, well, they knew how to play around stitches really well, and we were kind of worried about Garrosh too, but the first priority was probably to get rid of the stitches. So that's what we ended up doing. Uh, so when the second game came around, even though we didn't do very well again, uh, it was a lot easier to play against that because we're more used to just taking on teams and team fights. <coughs> yeah, we, we kind of assumed that a Matthew ban was going to come because it kind of seemed like it was having a huge impact on the team fights, especially late game. But when we saw the stitches ban come game three, we knew that that's exactly what you guys were thinking, that they were playing very well around stitches. I mean, we didn't know if you guys had scrimmed each other or not, just based solely off of how fast they were snap locking those Kelty's odd picks. But um, <laughs> is Kelty's odd something you guys have been playing a lot, or is it just something Lazy French has just kind of picked up like pretty quickly because his combos are insane? Well, his uh, his Alarak started getting banned, so we tried to look for other picks that he could start taking. That uh, you know, if uh, if they start comfort banning Alarak, we can take KT and vice versa. At this point, uh, so that's more or less why he spent all the time getting good with him over the past, I think, week, week, two weeks. It definitely shown, and even going back to that game one, the Alarak combos were absolutely nuts. The, the follow up was instant. Like there was, there was no second thought. The noob stun came, the Alara combo came, the chromie damage came, dead. You guys, you have it on lock, and I mean, it's going to be very fun to see you guys moving forward. And I, I can't wait to see what you guys do. Well, thank you. I hope to be interviewed again. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm always curious um, about the uh, internal decision making on teams because it's, I, I find it educational. How do you guys handle uh, draft shot calling and in-game shot calling? Is there one guy who does it? Do you have one guy who does one and the other? Do you duo it? How, how, does, how do you guys handle that within the team dynamic? Uh, everything's mostly collaborative, especially banning. We put it in the hands of Lazy French because he doesn't forget to ban. But uh, <laughs> every single time we start, uh, every single time the ban phase comes, it's definitely a discussion. It's same with the shot calls. Like uh, a lot of the times, he, I guess in the last series of games we played, it wasn't one person making that call to go uh, knock down the core. It was a flurry of suggestions, and then the decision comes that, oh yeah, let's just core them right now. So that's kind of how we've been operating. And sometimes it makes us messy, but apparently it works. So is there ultimately one guy that makes that call, or is it just kind of uh, eventually you guys come to a consensus? Uh, whoever seems the most sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Anything for you, Corey? Um, maybe just following up on just the uh, like the comms and team dynamic. <laughs> like, uh, how was the the tilt level after game one? I mean, were you guys like a little frustrated? Was it just like, ah, eh, we we know what they're gonna they're gonna go. We can beat them in draft. Just keep going forward. Was you know uh, how, how do you how do you come back from that? Well, we were we were probably down a lot worse in the last series we played too, and I think one thing that we have been pretty good at because we always get into these dumb situations that we we can play from behind and nobody really gets too upset about it. So that's that's usually why we can pull games back from nothing, and especially in hots, it's just kind of a different game. Once you hit about level twenty, uh, if they have one keep and a core, you're you know a minute away from ending the game. So uh, it just hangs on the thread that late, and we all kind of understand that. So you guys uh, eyeball in Division One next season? Uh, yeah, uh, well, it depends if everybody stays together, more or less, and it uh, depends on how everyone's schedules work out. But uh, yeah, I could definitely see us trying Division One instead and getting taught a few lessons. Uh, also, <laughs> I'm curious, how, how do your team come together? These are always fun stories. You use five randos off the internet. Do any of you guys actually know each other? Uh, well, three of us worked together, and then after that, we just started searching for ringers. And... Uh, it's just a bunch of uh, guys I've been playing with because I've all the oldest have been playing, I think, since alpha or beta. So we decided, what the hell? Let's just try it out. All right. Well, awesome. good times. Congratulations again. Great games. It was a pretty entertaining series to watch all around. <laughs> well, thank you. And look forward to watching you guys go forward. Great. Uh, thanks for casting our games, guys. Right on. Awesome. Have a good night. See ya. All right, guys. Well, our first TriCast, we didn't really talk over each other too much. I'm going to call it a, uh, a resounding success. Yeah, it, it yeah. paid off. Uh, a couple a couple shakeups, but we we, uh, we came back quick. And, yeah, I'd uh, like to do this more. This is pretty – it's just a little different. I like it. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely uh, – it's always nice having me. more viewpoints, and it's always more fun casting with people. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's been a while for me, and I know me and Jake have done it a few times. So Yeah, solo casting, cool. while fun, always, always more fun to do it with other people. Um, so <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, it's a schedule allowing, depending on how far we go into the playoffs, I'll definitely be picking up some more casts. But it was a blast, guys, and it was a fun series, too. It was a really good series. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So cool. congratulations to Cron 6 and uh, great showing from Dunning Kruger Knights. And I'll see you guys, talk to you later. Thanks for joining us and hope everybody enjoyed the cast.